Hello everyone and welcome to the Neotech Electronics Series. This video is about the BJT amplifier, so let's get started. Alright everybody, so this video is going to be about a bipolar junction transistor amplifier, alright? So instead of saying bipolar junction transistor, I just wrote the three letters B, J, T, right? Now, I wrote two questions that came to mind and I want you to think about is what is amplification? What does that mean, right? Well, amplify, in mo usually in most cases, it means you're gonna make something bigger. It starts out with one size and it ends in a greater size. So if you're talking voltage, your input voltage might be small, right? And then you're going to amplify it and then your output voltage is going to be large. Get it? And how would you write the equation for amplification? I mean, just thinking about it, how would you quantify how much something is amplified? Well, quite simply, that's going to be your output divided by your input. Now, remember, and, and what we're going to talk about, we're basically talking about a voltage, so we're going to have V out over V in. But this could, amplification can apply to current just as well, right? All right, you could have a low current going in and a higher current coming out. In fact, if you want to think about it, the uh, bipolar junction transistor, your beta is your amplifier. If you think of your input going in through your base, right? You talk about I of your base, you're going to multiply that times this beta, and that's going to equal your IC, which we can consider your output, right? So if we want to rearrange it, beta is going to equal IC over IB. You can think of beta is your current amplification of your transistor, right? All right, so let's do something here. I'm going to draw a circuit that you're all very used to now, okay? And why don't you try to draw it along with me, okay? Let's, let's uh, get some practice here. So we're going to have a circuit. We're drawing the base leg here. Right here's your going to zero, and this is V B B, right? We'll come out. Now what's going here? You're going through R B. Then what? We go to an amplifier, don't we? So this is your base. I'm going to put a little B here, okay? This is your base. Here's your emitter, right? And your emitter is going to come down to ground, right? Now what about this one? This one, sorry about that thing was wrong here. There is your collector resistor, RC, right? And then what are you doing? You're going to come down here to VCC and this will come down to your ground. Got it? And this is VCC. Now, 
let's draw this in a different color here. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep it black too. So, I'm going to extend this a little bit. Alright, so what does this do? It means you are going to have a voltage here, right? A VBB, this is your emitter, and this is your collector, got it? So your VBB, your input signal, you, I'm sorry, we haven't talked about the input signal yet, but this is going to have a DC voltage on it, right, at your base. You know, this is going to be 0.7 volts, and you know, you have a higher voltage coming in, and the rest of it's going to be dropped across RB. Now, we're going to add another signal coming in, and this signal is going to be an AC signal, all right? we're going to put a capacitor right here alright that's a capacitor alright now actually when you draw this sometimes you draw it like that right then you can come down to an AC source that's your AC source we can call it BS for your source and that's going to have a ground all right so if we look at it you have an AC signal coming in here. I'm going to draw it like this. All right. Now this is called this capacitor. All right. I've heard different names for it. I'm not going to stay, say all their names right now. But what this capacitor does is it allows this AC signal to go right on through it, but it keeps the DC signal over here. So you're going to have a VBB voltage right here. That's going to be VBB right here, right? Because you're right on on the side of the battery, on the side of the battery where the voltage is, obviously. But over here, it's not. This side is not, right? So if we want to draw it, what happens? is you have a voltage here at VBB, right? And now you're going to have an AC signal laying right on top of it, right? That signal is oscillating right around that VBB voltage, all right? Sometimes these are called coupling capacitors. These capacitors right here. Sometimes they're called coupling. Sometimes they're called blocking capacitors because it blocks the DC. I've heard both terms used. But that's the function. It's better to remember the function of these things than kill yourself with names. I'm going to remove some of this now because I don't want to get too much much stuff written here all right so I'm gonna keep this here so you know that this is your signal coming in and now this is what it looks like at this point right here this is what it sees okay now in AC right the transistor here in the emitter has a resistance. The resistance is termed R prime of E. By the way, notice I'm using a lowercase e. Okay? This lowercase e signifies, with lowercase means you're talking about AC items, uppercase means you're talking about DC items. That's just the conventions that's used in the text, all right? So, 
as this thing is moving around here, right, you're going to end up with a voltage right here. of VB, right? That is your input, okay? Your base input. Now, at this point, right here, okay? You're going to have a voltage out. Now, I'm gonna draw this up here right now, okay? something similar okay zero this is your VC and this is time obviously in this this direction this is time is the same same as it was here this is time sorry I should have put that there earlier this is time. So you're going to have a voltage. This voltage here is going to be your VCE, which you know how to calculate. But you're going to have a voltage going around that, right? If you notice, this voltage here swings more, swings higher and swings lower around this uh, VCE than the input. Okay? So, this is your VC right here. I'm going to write it down here for you. VC. I just do the graph up there, that's what this was for. Let me come back here. That's your VC and then this goes to your ground, right? So you can think about it as your V out is equal to your VC and your VN was equal to your VB. Got it? Now, let's write some equations here, shall we? So we can go through this. When you're looking at this model, and I realize you haven't seen it before, okay? But let's just give it a go here. So if we want to say, find out what your V your base is, right? That's going to equal IE lowercase e, right? Times R prime of E. Got it? Because you have this resistor right here. Alright? Is located here so it's going to see that resistance before it hits ground got it we're talking about the AC signal so obviously the voltage dropped across RE is going to be what the voltage you're at so you multiply your current times that voltage is times that resistance I'm sorry it's going to give you the voltage right here so that's your input right so let's look at your VC right VC is going to equal IC, right, lowercase c, times R big C. Now we're talking about this resistor right here. Now, this is one of the characteristics about AC voltages. For an AC voltage, okay, this VCC source right here is considered ground, right? 
Actually, so is this v VVV source. But for what we're talking about, just remember this. The VCC source can be considered ground. So if you have a voltage right here, okay, you're going across RC to ground. And that current, right, that current times that resistance is going to give you a voltage, and that's what it is equal to, all right? Now, since IC is approximately equal to, uh, this RC is approximately equal to IE, we're going to say that this is approximately equal to I. E R C. Get it? Now we just talked about these two. This is your output and then this is your input. Let's put one over the other. Right? That seems to be the next logical thing to do so we can get the amplification. So we know AV, this is the symbol for amplification, right? Is going to be equal to VC, which is your output, over VB, which is your input, and that's going to be equal to IE RC divided by V of your base, which is IE R prime of E, right? I'm sorry, I forgot the E here, right? So, if you notice, these two items cancel out, right? So what you're left with here is AV is equal to RC, it's a capital C there, divided by R prime of E, which is right here, okay? So that determines your amplification for your AC signal coming through this circuit. Got it? Then the next, uh, next section, we're going to continue this discussion and we're going to talk more about AC signals and amplification. See you shortly. Alright everyone, so now let's take a step back for a second. So we know that amplification, right? That's represented by what's called AV. That means amplification, all right? Now a generic symbol for amplification is a triangle on its side, okay? And your signal usually comes in from your left and exits through the right. So this is your input and then this is your output. Okay. Got it? Now, I want you to think of something. What happens if you have a signal coming in? Suppose you have a signal coming in just like this, all right? It's just coming in. Now, if your output, let me draw your output here. Now suppose your output is one of these numbers. This is flat. That is called clipping. You want to see something that looks like this, but instead what happened is, in this example, this part just got removed. And it's instead of going up all the way it should, it's clipped, it's flat. And the same thing could happen here on the bottom, 
right? It could happen right there as well. So let's think about this for a little bit because how you design your amplifier is very important because you don't want to have clipping, right? So if you recall, when you drew your load line, you had something this and like this right you had IC here you had VCE on your x-axis and then when you come down this was VCE cut off and this right here was I C sat. Now, what's happened in this case, this clipping, this is due to cut off. If the clipping was observed on the bottom here, if you had clipping right here, that clipping would be due to saturation due to saturation so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to draw a circuit alright let's start this right now rather exciting I always like drawing a new circuit right although you've seen this now quite a few times but let's let's just draw it right so please draw it with me at home the more you draw it the better you get right Your emitter coming down to ground, right? I see, come back down, come down, 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 VCC, RC, RB, VBB. Got it? Let me draw that RC resistor a little bit nicer for you. Alright, so there's your basic circuit. Now, let's just go through some things here. Suppose this is variable. That means you can change the voltage from 0 to 5 volts. Okay? RB, this is 10 ohms. Got it? RC 220 ohms, right? And your VCC is 10 volts. Got it? Now, if VBB is adjusted to produce a base current of 200 microamps let's write this down IB equals 200 microamps right it's a U with a long tail since IC equals beta times DC equals uh, beta DC times IB the collector current equals 20 milliamps right we forgot to put one thing in here beta equals 100 right so we want to find out its associated VCE right that's going to equal VCC minus I C R C this is all D C calculations, right? Which is equal to ten volts minus 
Now, we multiplied 200 microamps times 20, right? So that's where you get your 20 milliamps, obviously. It's going to equal to 20 milliamps times 220 ohms, right? That's going to equal 5.6 volts, okay? So that's the Q point. That's where the Q point is going to be. You know where VCE is, okay? And you know what IC is, okay? There's your IC, and there's your VCE. Got it? Now, let's do the same exercise, except now let's change it so IB, IB equals 300 microamps. And if you do that, you're going to come up with VCE equals 3.4 volts. Got it? And IC is going to put IC here. It's going to equal 30 milliamps. That's a 30 milliamps. Okay? And let's continue. We got IB equals, so obviously we did 200, 300, this obviously is going to be 400 microamps, right? And with that, VCE is going to equal 1.2 volts. And IC is going to equal 40 milliamps. Got it? So, let's draw it, shall we? I'm going to take this space to draw it right here. Here's your line down. And here is this coming across. This I see. And this is going to be VCE. Now, if you draw this correctly, if you put this on Excel or a spreadsheet, it would be much more precise. So let's just say that's 10. Let's see if it's going to work out right. 20, 30, 40. We can go up here to 50. Okay, so if we're going to look at VCE, let's have a value. We're going to start at zero here, obviously. That's zero. And let's come over here. Let's come over here to 10 volts, right? So we're going to say if this is 10, this is going to be 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, and we'll do the same here. Four, three, two, one. This might work pretty well, actually, when you think about it, right? So let's put the first Q point we found on there, right? It's 20 milliamps, it's going to be right here, right? And what's the what's VCE on that one? BCE equals 5.6, right about there. That's this one, okay? Let's do the next one. We had 330, okay? And that's at 3.4 volts. Well, if this is 4 here, this is three. It's going to be close, a little less than the center, right? And right up here. All right. That's that point, right? Let's do the next one. 400 million. So we got 40. And we have VCE equals 1.2 volts. Well, here's 
two and here's one so I guess it would be somewhere right around there all right so this is beautiful right we have three Q points and they're gonna lie right on the DC load line now let's think about this right the DC load line that we're going to draw this is going to be I see sad this is going to equal let me move this down a little bit for you alright That's going to equal, what do we have, 10 volts? That's your VCC divided by 220. All right, so this is going to equal, forty-five point five milliamps, right? gonna be right about there isn't it amazing look they're all coming down so let's take a guess where's the 10 volts you know 10 volts is going to be VCC right now this is going to be the tricky part everyone I'm going to try to connect these lot these lines here for you not bad there's your DC load line And this is cut off. VCE cut off. All right, and you have IC sat right here, and there's your value. Did you know this is simply equal to VCC, right? And you have your three Q points on here, right? Now. This is beautiful. So now we went through the circuit and we got it all set so we kind of we can understand it. Now this is what I want you to understand. When you put in a signal on that, an AC signal, that's going to think of it it's, it's going to vary, right? And this this is one way. There's many, many ways. There's several ways to think about it, right? But if you think of your input signal varying around, suppose it's going to vary around this point, right? It's going to come up and down and back up, right? Suppose this is the center line of it, right? Well, what happened here? It went beyond your saturation you get it it can't drive any more current than it when it's saturated that's the limit here you're gonna get a cutoff get it you're gonna get clipping right this is what I'm trying to show to you why you get it let me try one down here if we have something suppose this is the center line it's not a very good center line but it's the same thing that's going to happen. It's going to come up, going to come down, come up. Well, look, you could have clipping right here, right? So you can clip on the top, you can clip on the bottom of the signal. Here's what you actually want to have when you, when you design a circuit. You want to have, you want to activate, you use your circuit in the active region that means you want it if you go right to the center and I'm going to assume this is the center right let's just say that's the center and let's draw a line out here that means the distance from here to here right right here and we'll call that just D 
and the distance from here to here. We're also going to call that D. They should be the same. Now what that means is if you have a signal coming in, I suppose that's your input signal, right? And you're going through an amplifier, right? And you come out. If the signal shows clipping on both sides at the same time. Suppose it just starts to clip here and just starts to clip here. If they, you're increasing that gain on the amplifier and they both start to clip at the same time, that's a centered signal. Got it? You know it's in the center of your load line. If one starts to clip before the other, you know it's not centered. Okay? So ideally, you want to operate your amplifier that, that signal, you want it to be located right here, okay? That means you you got to adjust your Q points. These Q points here are too high, aren't they? This one here is too low, because you want them to be right there, get it? Which means VCE would be 5 volts, it would be half, half of your VCE, right? And your current, you would want to be half when I say your current, when you come over here, right? You want it to be basically half of your saturation current. Got it? So that is something I wanted to make sure that you understood when you're designing these things. Your load line is critical because you want it, you want your Q point of your circuit, which is determined from your DC values, to be centered. Okay? All right, everybody, I will see you short.